In order to get familiar with the Suite project, we will create a new project and I'll go through it with you. Let's go to File, New. On the Common tab, we will select Suite Advanced UI Project. The name of the project is going to be Suite Test. And the location is going to be Suite Test Installation. Let's look at the IDE. We see that we have the Start Page and the Installation Designer tabs but there is no project assistant. Also, we see that the suite project has a small number of views when compared to the other install shield project types. Let's look up at the toolbar. There are several buttons that are disabled. For example, there is no release wizard, no compile button, no test user interface button, and no debug button. There is also an abbreviated general information view. There's no setup design view, only features and packages views. In a suite project, each installation in the project is called a package, and each package has to be assigned to a feature. So features should be created first. I'm going to right click and say new feature and I will call this Hello World x86. Now here's the packages view. If we right click on packages, we have several choices. New Windows installer package which is an MSI file, new install script package, which is a header file, HDR, new patch package, MSP, new executable package, .exe, new sideloading app package, APPX, you can have a new transaction, and you can import a prerequisite. When you add individual installations to a suite project, you can add them as packages. You also install them as packages. You can also install them using transaction processing. But if you do that, it requires Windows Installer 4.5 or higher. I'll create a regular package to show you. Regarding the executable package, Install Shield allows you to add single EXE releases, which again are setup.exe packages but they recommend that you use single MSI releases if the underlying install is an MSI file. What I mean is one with an MSI file extension. The reason is to allow Install Shield to peek under the hood and set up detect and eligibility conditions and hook up the progress bar from the MSI so it can be seen from the suite installation's progress bar. Now we will create a regular package and select New Windows Installer Package, MSI. And we're going to browse to the Hello World x86 single MSI package. Notice that we have to select the MSI file and whether we have any other files. We do not have any other files, so I'll select Add Nothing. And we'll just accept the default name for the package, which is Hello World x86. Now for each package, we have two tabs, Common and Features. The Support Files view, this is what you're used to, except it's abbreviated. You only have a language independent folder and then a folder for each language. The property manager view here is what you're used to. The events view is where you can schedule an action to occur during one or more runtime events. You can also use the packages view to schedule an action to occur immediately before or after a specific package is run. 
Also notice over here on the left that there is no custom actions and sequences view like in a regular basic MSI project. Let's look at the wizard interface. The wizard interface is what's different about a suite project. This is where you create the user interface for your installation. In a normal install shield installation user interface, the user goes from dialog to dialog and enters information. Here you go from wizard page to wizard page. In the middle pane are several nodes. There are styles, wizard pages, and secondary windows. Under styles you have existing ones. You can also create new styles by right clicking and and adding. You can create font sets, text styles, and brush styles. Remember font sets can be used to set a different font for each language in your installation. When you click on wizard pages you get the global properties for all the wizard pages in the installation. In the wizard options section Notice you can set properties like the wizard caption and in the wizard format there is a new type of background called glass. You could set wizard icon, page height and width, style flags, default body background, full wizard background, that's a new setting. And then you have the wizard header options page for the header for the wizard page. And then you have the wizard navigation options section. Here there's a new property called navigation text style. And this is where you specify a global text style for all navigation buttons. Let's click on an individual page, the license agreement page. In a basic MSI project, a dialog's button control events tells the installer what dialog to go to next. However, in a wizard page, you use actions. There is a navigation section in the list of properties, which is where you set the actions of the buttons. I'll expand the next button here. And notice there's a click setting. When you click on the click property, you can add an action to it. I'll move the IDE over so you can see what happens when I click on it. If I click, here are the different actions you can set. You can set a property, install, print, open, browse for folder, browse for file, set active page, show window, or browse for DLL action. If you want to go to another page when they click the next button. You select Set Active Page. And then under the page setting, you select the page that you want to go to. And that's how it works. Now if you right click on Wizard Pages here, you can add new pages. You can add a blank page, a splash page, or a predefined page. Notice that you put the splash page in the wizard pages section. You don't put the splash graphic in the support files view like you do with regular basic MSI projects. Under secondary windows, you can add blank windows. Let's move on. The next view is the string editor. It's the same view that you're used to using. The path variables view is also the same. The releases view is the same. It's just that when you create a release, it has fewer properties that can be set as opposed to regular install shield project releases. I'll right click new release. See, we have much fewer properties. And that's a whirlwind tour of the suite project. You should be saying, hey, they forgot something pretty important, and you would be right. There is no redistributables view.
I think that would be nice, but the Install Shield staff has chosen to have you add redistributables through the packages view. Let's go back here. Remember, if I right click on packages, I can select import prerequisite. When I do it, I need to browse to the prerequisite file. I'll go to program files 86, install shield 2013, set of prerequisites. Here's .NET 2.0 SP2 X64. Let's add that. Now, after I add it, I can move it up or down. Let me right click and I'll say move up. So I'm installing the prerequisite before the Hello World project. So a redistributables view might be nice, but at least there is a facility for adding prerequisites. It's now possible to create a Visual Studio type installation where you install multiple prerequisites and packages and do multiple reboots when needed. In my opinion, the Suite project is now very capable and I'm looking forward to use it in my own client projects. And that has been a whirlwind tour of the Suite project.